Hi, this is Betsy Hill, president of Brainware Learning Company. And what I'm going to do today is provide a brief introduction to the MindPrint Cognitive Assessment and how easy it is to create a personalized learning plan for any student based on their specific cognitive strengths and weaknesses. Just a little bit of background on MindPrint. It was developed at the University of Pennsylvania in the School of Medicine. It has been through all of the hoops that you would hope for a uh, normed, reliable, scientifically valid cognitive assessment and has a high correlation with other cognitive assessments that you may be familiar with. Some of the advantages are that it can be administered online in about an hour and that it can be administered by a teacher or a parent. It's really very straightforward and very easy to do. It's also quite affordable and you're provided with, uh, especially if you're a school or a clinician, a variety of different reporting options to suit your situation. There are 10 subtests in the MindPrint Cognitive Assessment. Each test will provide you, when you get the report, you will have a score for accuracy and also a score for speed so that you'll be able to tell if a student can do a particular task but maybe is quite slow at it or conversely, they may be rushing through things and then making a lot of mistakes. So it gives you quite a bit of, you know, of information in that respect. So two of the tests have to do with processing speed, visual motor speed and processing speed. Um, there are three executive functions tests, attention, flexible thinking, and working memory. Also three reasoning tests, abstract, verbal, and spatial reasoning. And then finally, two memory tests, and it tests both verbal and visual memory. So the first step, of course, is that a student will take the assessment, simply done with the computer that needs to have a mouse and an internet connection. So it's online, and as I said before, it takes about an hour. It can be overseen by you in your office if you're a clinician, or it can be administered by a teacher in a classroom or a computer lab, um, or even a parent can oversee it, um, and that can be very handy if you do uh, work with students who are at some distance or can't make it into your office. Out of that, you will, of course, find out in a variety of different reporting formats uh, what strengths and weaknesses this student has from a cognitive point of view. So this student um, has doesn't have any skills in that skills to support that weaknesses area. That would be in the bottom 16% of the population. In the top 16% of the population, the student had a number of scores. This is quite a capable student. And then a variety of scores also in the expected range in that uh, middle area, which would be uh, normally developing for their age and gender. Uh, but we'll see if they're a little bit lower, a little bit higher, even within that expected range. So there are a variety of different reporting options for clinicians in schools. One is just the standard scores. The other one is a twist on the standard scores called the mind print assist. I'm gonna show you an example in just a moment. The comprehensive mind print, which is the most detailed and really a very compelling um, uh, report that can be shared with uh, parents and students. And then a cognitive growth report if you are using the assessment as a pretest and post-test for example, if you have a student using Brainware Safari, many schools and clinicians are using MindPrint as the pre and the post test and the cognitive growth report will look at improvement across all of those different skills for the, uh, the student who's being reported uh, for. So the simplest one, of course, is a standard scores report. If you work with standard scores, uh, this will be uh, probably very familiar looking to you. Uh, it will report both speed and accuracy, as I said, and then characterize whether this is at the low end, a weakness, a strength in the, in the expected range where uh, that standard score uh, implies that that student falls. And if you work with standard scores, of course, this will be quite familiar territory to you. The MindPrint Assist adds to the standard scores with a descriptive paragraph. So if you are including a write-up or providing a discussion of some kind for a report for parents or students, um, this is something that can 
uh, definitely expedite that process and make things a little bit easier. The full comprehensive mind print is a detailed report, usually about 10 to 12 pages, that has a full discussion of the student's learning profile, how they performed on all these tests, what it means, and uh, then proceeds to go into each uh, skill area and discuss that in depth. So it will discuss what that skill is, it will discuss how the student performed on the test and what that means what it means for their learning, what it means for the kinds of um, experiences and uh, uh, difficulties or ease that they may be able to do various academic skills with. So we start always with the strengths and how the student and parent and teacher can all help the student reinforce those strengths and then goes on to discuss uh, specific needs, so the areas that are weaknesses or need some support. So for this student, that happened to be flexible thinking, and it discusses the kinds of things you might see as a parent or teacher uh, and how to support that student. After that happens, um, then you have access to a really rich and extensive personalized toolbox of resources. And this is where the um, personal learning plan comes into play. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna switch from my PowerPoint and I am going to share my screen with you and we are going to go in to my, oh, that's my PowerPoint, go into my um, account in my print. And I can see my students and I'm going to select my one student here so I can look at his learning profile if I want always from here. But what I'm gonna do now, since I've already seen his learning profile, is I'm gonna go directly into his personalized toolbox. So I have a number of choices here. I can search for individual strategies or individual products or things like that. But I can also go straight to the student plans button on the right. And I'm going to select personalized learning plan because what I wanna do is I wanna create a plan that I can share with Devante and his parents and his teachers <clears throat> so that everybody can be on the same page understanding his uh, mind print, you know, his learning profile. <clears throat> so within here, I can also, of course, develop plans that are that I sort of do it yourself plans, but this one is so convenient. So I will select areas that I want to focus on or that he and uh, his parents and I have all agreed to focus on. So I've checked study skills, reading and writing for this purpose. Uh, it'll remind me what his profile skills are. And then what it will do is it automatically selects two strategies for each of these areas that are the best fit with this student's individual strengths and weaknesses. So for example, this student has strengths in working memory and visual memory, as you can see in the center box on top. But skills to support include verbal reasoning, attention, organization, uh, processing speed, and motor speed. So I'm going to go down now and I can see that this is a best fit for attention and processing speed and organization. So this is keying right into those areas where that student needs extra support. And it automatically selects two strategies for study skills, two strategies for reading, and two strategies for writing. Now, if I don't want to, or if I do want to explore other options, I can just click on add or change strategies and I can see a plethora of other options. Uh, some of them have to do with testing. Some of them have to do with preparation. Some of them have to do more directly with the, the reading process. Uh, but I can see that there are a lot of really good fit strategies. And then it goes down to some that are um, maybe helpful um, but not necessarily don't seem to be as good of a fit in this particular situation for this particular student. So if I want to, I can change them, I can add to, I can have more or less. But this is a great starting point for a student and parent and the teacher um, with you or the clinician, if, the, if you're a clinician involved in this, to get started on some very specific strategies, approaches that will be helpful for this student um, in particular. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to, I want to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to get back to here where I'm going to pull my presentation back up. So again, the personalized toolbox of resources also includes other things, but the personalized student plan is really where the power is. It's just uh, administer the assessment. Uh, the results should be ready uh, not too long after that. Depends a little bit on how detailed reporting you're asking for. Uh, but then it's really just a few clicks away until you automatically. That strat that's report, that individualized learning plan can be communicated directly with teachers and parents. You can print it, you can share it. Uh, it's very, very easy to uh, take the next step. The final report I wanted to just share briefly with you is the cognitive growth report. And this assumes that the student is taking the assessment twice, once before and once after using Brainware Safari Cognitive Training Program. So you can see that we have all of the different tests. We can see what the result was on the pretest. So for this student, visual motor, street, motor speed was a strength on the pretest, also a strength on the post test. But in some of these other areas, um, it is, uh, for example, the student was uh, needed support, the bottom actually 5% in attention, and moved up to low expected after doing cognitive training with Brainware Safari, which was a very significant improvement. So here, a significant improvement is at least a half a standard deviation and a full standard deviation or more for a very significant improvement. So that's another kind of reporting specifically for the situation of using brain of using MindPrint as a pre and a post test. So I hope that's been helpful. I hope you've seen how easy it is to create an individualized learning plan, specifically addressing the uh, cognitive strengths and weaknesses of any student and uh, how useful that can be in helping support them in their learning. More information is available on our website or by calling us or by emailing us. Uh, we certainly hope to hear from you. And if you have any questions, we hope you'll get in touch. Thanks so much. Have a great day.